Hi guys. Um, today marks the 22nd day that I haven't eaten any food, which is the longest I've been without food now. Um, the previous longest fast I've done was 20 days with no food. Um, and in that fast, it was 20 days to try and show how to lose as little weight as possible. The intention I set was to lose a stone and I lost three pounds during that particular fast. This particular time round, I've just told my body to do exactly what it needs to do, to let go of anything that it needs to let go of, to clear the way to bring in any new energies and as much light as it possibly needs to bring in. In these last two months left of 2019, which is a three year, and we've got a master 22 number year coming through next year. So today I'm gonna to answer a few questions from what you guys have sent to me. Um, but before I do that, I just want to say that in January, the end of January, I'm going to be um, doing a competition. So the competition starts today. I'm looking for three guys and three girls that are really committed to trying something new, stepping out of their box and challenging themselves. So I'm going to be renting a couple of log cabins, either in the Lake District or the Yorkshire Dales. And I'm going to be doing another seven day hard dry fast retreat. This one will be 10 days though because there will be three days of preparations in advance and there will probably be about a week's long worth of uh, 30 minute Zoom calls to prepare you for it. There won't be any charge for my actual services or for the guys that are coming along to help for this and there will be sweat lodges, there will be meditations, there will be affirmations, uh, yoga lessons, breath work lessons. So you get all of that for free but you will have to pay for the accommodation. And you will also have to sign that this will all be recorded because it's going to be documented. Um, generally, I'm expecting at least 80% of you to make it through to seven days with no food or water. Because in the previous retreats that I've done, with the energy surrounding everyone and the high vibrations of where we are and the breath work and utilising all the energies that are available to us apart from food, there's been a very, very small dropout rate and people have made it to at least five days. Um, we will have certain things on hand for if you do want to come off of your fast to break it down and to ease you back in. Um, all else you will need is to be free from the last week of January for 10 days. Um, I'm ideally looking for out of the three girls and the three guys that put themselves in for this, for one of each sex to be a personal trainer or a nutritionist because this is where I really want to have the most effect and be able to show how I've gone from a meat eater three years ago to a pescatarian, to eating dairy, to then cutting out eggs, to going plant-based three years ago, from then going plant-based and realizing that this was a belief system that I needed to eat meat. Then I changed my belief system to eat vegetables and fruit, like Game Changers has done for a lot of people now. But then I thought, we can do anything when we change our belief systems. Because once we change our belief systems and get this into our subconscious, anything that you get into your subconscious gets objectified and made possible. And this is said by so many people, Neville Goddard, um, it's in Think Rich, Grow Rich, it's in the Bible, it's in so many different contexts over the years, just translated into different versions. So I actually tried going without food for 20 days and not losing any weight, I lost three pounds, and then I tried losing a stone in five days and I lost 11 pounds. So if you reprogram your subconscious and you get the belief system in there and you affirm it enough and your cells listen to it, it's the energy you give to your food is how your food has the energy. The only other place it gets energy from is from the sun, which is the most abundant energy source there is. So if you're looking to try this or you're willing enough to give this a go or you're a personal trainer that thinks this is absolute bollocks and you think you want to try and prove me wrong, email me, message me, put your name down and come along for this journey because I guarantee you, you will get through this. And at least 90% of the people will get through it, if not 100%. Because you'll have three or four people, we'll have another girl with us that can guide you through this, that's done the process with me. We'll have another two guys that can do it. We've got a breathwork coach, we've got a sweat lodge shaman. We will be coaching you through every way to do this and all the energies to utilize. As I said, you will need to sign a disclosure form that this will be made into a documentary. Um, from that, I would like to say that I'm looking forward to reading your application. So please put any links to any pages you've got, any what you do for a living, your age, what you'd like to achieve from this, 
um, and send it to either my YouTube or my email address, mindbodysoulspiritcoach at gmail.com. Facebook, r666ha13. Instagram, mindbodysoulspiritcoach. Um, and for now, I'm just going to answer a few questions that you guys have sent in for what's going on with my 22-day fast. So the first one is, how am I feeling? And if I'm honest, I'm feeling absolutely amazing. Um, when I fast, my connection to everything becomes so much more pure. I'm a big believer that when we put another form of energy into our body, it actually slows down our own energy interface with our connection to everything. So I believe if we're going to eat, the foods we should eat are mainly fruits, which are 90% water and some of the highly most electrical foods we can eat. Cacao is very, very electrical. Um, vegetables are 72% water. When I come off of this fast, for the first week, I'm going to be doing juices. Um, I'm going to be doing blended vegetables, soups. Um, and I'm going to show how from the 8th of December through to the 1st of January, I can put on roughly around three quarters of a stone of solid muscle. That's my goal. I'm going to be down to a very, very low figure body fat percentage by then. I'm already down to single figures now. Um, this time round, as I said, I've let my body do exactly what it needs to do. I've said if there's any attachments, emotions, um, any body fat, anything it wants to let go of, to just feel free to let go of it. Um, I had a really emotional day with a friend and mentee round that we just really felt there's a lot of energy shifts going on. Um, we both had a real big cry. Um, it was really, really powerful. Um, I also have been taking um, saunas and the occasional steam room because um, I do believe that a lot of emotion and pent up um, emotions are stored in water in the fat cells in our body. And that's how we get rid of a lot of these is through fasting, through sweat lodges and through crying, through bringing up the emotion and getting rid of it and releasing it. Um, so, yeah, I'm feeling amazing. Um, it just feels I feel, as I said, I feel so connected to everything. I feel my energy's up. I've been recording at the end of this. I'm going to be putting up a log of my sleeping data. So my sleep has this time gone from about eight and a half to nine hours a night. And I'm currently down to anywhere between five and a half to seven and a half hours, depending on um, how much train, training I've done. I had a really heavy leg session the other day. Um, I played some solfagio frequencies through the night, specifically ones related to healing cells. Um, and I also, every night, I do a meditation, meditation that goes through the cells and the organs and the muscle systems of the body and tells them to rejuvenate, regenerate, replenish, renourish and raise to their highest frequency. Um, and I do this every day, sometimes every morning and every evening. Um, and I do this whenever I'm feeling hungry with some breath work as well. Um, I always do a little meditation after I've done the breath work because when you do breath work, you feel so peaceful and so just so in love with everything. It's almost like you just come up a little bit on an ecstasy tablet. You can check out my Chakra Wheel Energy breath work video, which I posted on YouTube earlier. And the next question is, what am I looking forward to? And if I'm honest, what I'm looking forward to is a poo. I haven't had a poo for a, a proper poo for probably about two weeks now. So um, it does feel strange. And you really start to notice how much time you spend thinking about food on a daily basis. You think on average the person's eating three times to six times a day. And then you've got to think about prep, where you're going to buy it from. You realise that probably about a third of your life is spent buying, thinking about preparing or going out to buy food. And it's also about social things as well, because when you go out, you always meet people in cafes, restaurants. So when I'm going out for meals with people and I'm just ordering a glass of water or a herbal tea or a coffee, there is a very, very strong energy you feel from people like, what are you doing here then? But you have to get over that as well. You have to, if you're going to have this sort of breath and attitude and you're going to realise that this is your energy and you're taking it back, after a week of doing it, nobody even flutters an eye at you, eyelash at you, because once you change your energy, everybody else doesn't even look at you. It's amazing. When I change my energy around anything now, I instantly noticed it. My manifestations are so fast that what I've been doing is I've also been fasting from thoughts a lot as well. So I will spend around four to five hours with a clear mind. The average person has 60,000 thoughts per day and we manifest their own lives. So if your thoughts send out a vibration and then when you speak them, they send out a higher vibration and when you write them down, they objectify them. 
But if you're having 60,000 thoughts, by the time you've had your first thought and that manifests, you've already, already had 15,000 more thoughts. So how do you see that correlation? But if you stop thinking for a certain amount of days, in India they do 10 day meditations where you just sit in a dark room and you get your food brought into you and you meditate for 10 days. And then when you just stop thinking for 10 days, that first thought you have when you come out, you see it manifest. The second thought you see it manifest. The third thought you see it manifest. You start to break down and see how your thoughts create your reality. But if you're having 60,000 thoughts a day, imagine how hard it is to see that correlation. So when I'm fasting, it's not only fasting from food, it's fasting from TV, it's fasting from radio, it's fasting from people, it's fasting from other energies. All I'm doing is getting the purest energies I can have through breath work, through air, through, through chi, through prana, through sunlight, through earthing and through nature. That's all I want. Everything else takes a back seat for a certain amount of time because it's all about finding and surrounding yourself with your own energy. Because even somebody else's projected energy of you can affect you. So everybody's got a different projection of you in their head. Your mum thinks differently of you than your dad thinks of you. Your boss has got a different version of you in their head to your co-worker's got in their head. Your brother's got a different version of you in your head to your sister. And when you're around different people, their projection and their energy fields will try to manipulate or will try to change your energy field. But then when you step back and you go somewhere, like I always suggest to someone, go on holiday for two weeks or go away for two weeks. Go and spend two weeks in nature where there's no one's projected energy on you. So you're just in your own energy bubble and then you can solidify and really find out who you are and connect with your mind and find out your own energies. Then when you come back, your energy stabilizes enough for nobody else's projection of you to affect it. And you actually then imprint your version of yourself on them. It might sound crazy, but think about it and even try it and you'll see for yourself. So yeah, I'm most looking forward to going to the toilet. Um, but whenever I'm fasting, I always notice if I do have a little look on social media, it's always food coming up. Bang, 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 bang. I've actually lost the interest to eat a lot of even vegan junk food. And I will treat myself to like a, a vegan burger or a vegan pizza or something occasionally. Whereas most of the time I'm fruits, vegetables, nuts. And I have a real passion for hummus, like whether it is pea hummus, chili hummus. I love hummus because it's got good amounts of proteins in it. I love chickpeas and you can just dip any veg into it. It's just my favorite food. I absolutely love it. Um, apart from that, um, that's, that's, that's it. I'm sorry I haven't been online for a, a week or so. I've, had, I've been helping somebody uh, run a speaking academy and... Um, coaching quite a few people and helping people through their own fasts over the last few days. So generally just holding space for people, which while you're fasting, you're very perceptible to other energies. Um, so yeah, I haven't had much time to get online, but I'm planning on getting back on and doing a video every day. Um, so if you're interested, um, please message me and get in contact or feel free to ask me any more questions you want to ask me. Um, tomorrow's talk again is going to be about what I believe will be the main shift from now on for the human race and what every person should incorporate in their daily life and what I generally coach in and help to activate people's DNA. So tune in tomorrow for that talk. Um, thank you for watching today and I'll catch you guys tomorrow, Thursday. So I hope you've all had a great week so far, uh, midweek madness, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Thanks.